Being just 20 kilometers or about an hour's bus ride from Tirana, the mountain city of Kuya is such an easy day trip that I find myself taking visitors there over and over and over again. Some of my best travel memories derive from this city, such as one day when I was with a Danish journalist and we were adopted into the family of a lovely local man who even invited us into his home. Rather oddly, the road to Kuria is the best place in the country to buy furniture for your home, as you will pass Mobilerie after Mobilerie as you travel towards the first ever capital of what was known back then in 1190 as the Principality of Arbor. Alexandra, Papa. what we are doing here? Um, well, we don't have a significant plan. The idea is to kind of just go around and meet interesting people. I understand. So I haven't actually lined up any interviews and there's a reason why. Every time I've come here, I've met someone really, really cool that does something really interesting, just naturally. So I'm gonna try and do that again. Like last time I was here, I met this guy who made these earrings and this bracelet and he's like a third generation silversmither. And yeah. so I just met him randomly walking. Okay, let's try it. A few other times when I've come, I've you know been invited to people's homes and shown around the castle and guided around. So we're just gonna see who we run into today and who wants to talk to me. How lucky are you? <laughs> All right. The beauty of being an Australian in, in Korea. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. so pretty much the plan is, is, yeah, to walk around and see who talks to us. Perfect. Kuya is quite a popular tourist destination, not only because it's close to Tirana, but also because of its history and importance in Albania. Most visits to Kuya start in Pazari Vietor, or the Old Bazaar, which is a section of cobblestone streets lined with traditional handicrafts, interesting antiques, and other typical Albanian-style souvenirs. This seemed like the perfect place to start wandering around, talking to the locals and seeing what new skills I might be able to pick up along the way. From filigree to carpet weaving to raki, it all happens in the old bazaar of Kuya. Just a few weekends before coming to film here, I had visited with some friends and purchased some silver filigree jewellery. I loved my new earrings, was wearing them, and thought to pay a visit to the man who ran the store, who happened to be the third generation of his family continuing with this work. Do you want to Yeah. Show me for. And then we'll do something for. See I can Mir, mir. Everything good, huh? Everything is wonderful. Thank you very much. I remembered about your Thank your you. shop, so we came back. I've got the earrings and the bracelet. Nice, huh? So the earrings were from your grandfather, yes? This is made in Albania. Mm -hmm. And from uh, more more from uh, Tirana, Skodra, but from the handcraft production from Artistic Emigeni many years ago. Mm -hmm. They have some really good like things. you like it here? Of course, of course. That's why I'm back, so. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, thank you very much. And so this is your shop. Mm -hmm. This is uh, some handcraft productions with the copper. Mm -hmm. And the outside has a silver filigree. Right, right. This is a uh, design, uh, not because here have so many Ottoman. Mm -hmm, models mm -hmm. because for 500 euros have Ottoman models here. Right, so this is their influence. Mm, influence. Mm -hmm. and this this uh, have so many handcraft productions from uh, ceramic from one woman, very nice woman from Tirana. Oh, nice. This is very special. So she all hand paints all of these? Everything. Wow, impressive. How cool is that? Not only is he selling the products made by him and his family, but he is supporting other creators as well. It really warms my heart to hear about all the different products from all the different people that he has on offer at his shop. One student from Canada do this plates with everything painted by hand. Oh, wow. A student? Uh-huh. It's a new models. 
And so how do you find these people that are... Mm. Finish the school and coming here. Uh huh. So I, you work I with. I do it. I do something. And right. So you work with university students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And nice. That's with him. It's all handmade. Oh, you can feel the texture. Yeah, yeah. No fabric. No that piece. is so cool. This is Albanian handcraft productions mm -hmm. from, from many, many years. The fact that he works closely with university students is particularly impressive, especially considering so many young people here are concerned about economic stability and opportunity. Wouldn't it be great if even more of these people who are well established in their careers took the time to mentor and support the youth? My cousin do it this plate with a couple here. Oh. I would have thought that was from a factory. No. <laughs> it looks this so plate good. And it is shop made. Wow. Everything. Yes. Uh, something else with this handmade I work with. One of my friends from Tirana who do these uh, animals with a sheep oh, wool filter. So cute! It's very pretty. Interesting and this with the uh, wood to do it oh, with, yeah. uh, with the hot steel pillography. This hand made. So it's like burned into the burned, wood? Burned, burned everything. Uh -huh. This is very special to do it with my friends from the North Albania. Do you know that? Uh, no. <laughs> Lauda. I've never seen this before. You see now. Oh. It is everything with one piece of wood. Wow. And everything carving by hand. So this is a traditional instrument from the north? Uh, from the north of Kenya. Mm -hmm. This is named Lauda many years ago for the old songs named mm -hmm. Rhapsody. Before the Chiftelia, we go the Chiftelia this side. Right. So this years. came first and then this was born from that. Born from that. Uh-huh. Very interesting. And the persons who do it, do it this. The scandal bags here, you know. It's very patriotic as well. <laughs> this national hero. Yeah. Know? Covered in eagles. Look at this, it's very special. Beautiful. Asher Bubba. Mm. No visit to Korea is complete without trying some local raki from a shopkeep. <laughs> Homemade. Ah, yes. raki rushes. Oh, homemade and not that really. Some homemade raki. You are a You are a Feeling a little bit buzzed from the raki, it was time to move on. Very quickly, something shiny caught my attention and I was drawn to the sparkliness like a moth to the flame. With the love heart emoji in my eyes, I was keen to take a closer look at the beautiful traditional Albanian clothing. Thank you so much for inviting us into your shop and allowing me to wear such beautiful clothing. So I understand you are the maker of these incredible outfits. Can you tell me a bit about the process of how to make these clothes? From Palini Deri, to jam të gjitha punin e dore, un personalisht e kam pasion, e menagjoj këtë pun nga 15 dite. Wow! I uh, have a costume popular traditional oh. cruise. Kemi have modele. model. The model is a very good model. The first model of Kruja. Yes, the first model of Kruja. The first model of Kruja. Yes, 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 the first model of Pra ndante në disnivellet e familjeve, që e familja më e pasur. Kemi kostume që janë me ingji, Shqipëria ka pasur shumë modele, pa. shumë krahina kishin modelet e veçanta. Mm -hmm. Pra ndaheshin nga, nga krahinat. Ky është modeli i parë që e ka dhe Tirana dhe Kruja, kjo tjetra pasaj është gjithashtu e që e, e ka edhe zona e jugu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's different from the north to the south. Jan Dushe, Shqipria Mesme, ka dimisht. Jugu ka fustanellat. Aha. Ndryshojnë, jugu me Shqiprin e Mesme ndryshojnë. Right, right. 
So it's not just the style that changes, but the, the, the actual outfits themselves are different. And how long do you, does it take for you to make one? Uh, like one costume duhet një deri në dy muaj, po wow. ka kostume që shkojnë deri në gjesh muaj. Ha? Ato kostume që janë deri në gjesh muaj kanë shumë më tepër pun, sepse fillojnë nga fillimi deri në fund me dorë. Mm -hmm. So everything from start to finish is by hand, and it can take one to two months minimum, up to six months to make something like this, by hand. Are there so, so or pretty? Nga 4 orë, shtë okay. tim. Kara si që punojme edhe 2 orë, sepse fia e arit të lodhë sytë. Pa. Ndërsa, fi, uh, ruzat i quen ingji, edhe ato kanë lodhje në vetë. Me ato punojme pak më shumë, mm -hmm. ndërsa me fia e arit pak më pak. Mm -hmm. Në ditë të ndryshme, me orë, bëhe një muj dhe 2 muj, mm -hmm. që është një kostum i mirë filtë, pasaj një kostum që është më i mirë, ka lodhë dheri në 6 muj. Wow, wow. So the best ones take about 6 months, and she's saying that more than two to four hours of work per day, your eyes will start to hurt because it's such detailed work, which is really incredible. So if you're passionate about something, then you're willing to work at it for a long time. So. Mm. You will change? Oh, shum. <laughs> I really wish that people dressed like this still today because I'm really enjoying, especially the the headdress. This is my style. <laughs> this woman is truly inspirational, having found her passion at a young age and being brave enough to pursue it. What she says is true, in my opinion, that if you find work that you love, then you will feel motivated to do it. Remember what Adriana said? The key to success is to find something you love and are good at, then find people who are willing to pay you for it. Perhaps if more of the young generation chased lifelong passion instead of fast money, we'd see more entrepreneurs and less call centre operators. Taking the black to do the pattern. Is this meant to be like an eagle, do you think? No, grape, uh, no eagle. Okay. Grapes. Ah. Continuing on and glancing inside every shop I walk past, I can't help but notice a lady weaving a carpet. I want to try, I want to try, I plead with the crew. And eventually they let up and ask her for me if I can have a go. Okay. 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 so aggressive. Dora <laughs> might. Oh. Okay. My left hand, I take the wool. Dora might, yeah, I have the other. Okay. Yeah, show. I cut me. Okay. So I take it with my right hand yeah. with three fingers. Move my feet. Yeah. Put the door into the knee. Me, Bravo. Okay. So I put my hand in with the tool. And my da, yeah, I have the other. With my left one, I do like this. Zero, zero. But I'm Louis. Okay, that was wrong. <laughs> okay. Hey, I did it! Woohoo! So <laughs> Pas, <laughs> Like this? With four like fingers? This? Okay. Shtu? Like this? With four fingers? Like this? 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 Like Like this? Like this? Like I don't need to. Yeah. Hey! Come My foot here like a car. And then I get this out. Come and show that. Ah, okay. 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 Like this? Then those are feeling? Yep. And then Definitely my super long fake nails do not provide any benefit in helping me as a carpet weaver. These things really render your hands useless, don't they? Bravo. 
Me pull pull it down. Down. Me pull it down. Me pull it There we go. I'm getting better. For the name of the I should be steering me in the phone. I should be steering me in the phone. I Okay. For one square meter, it takes seven days. One person? For one person? One person? One person? One For eight hours in a day for seven days for one square meter. So we've gone up this way and now we're going back towards the left to create the next row. Yeah. So the foot pedals open up the strings so you can pull it out and put the new piece of wool through. Okay. okay. So no matter which way you go, this one always stays in your right hand. It's just a matter of which way you swing the wool through. I also have small hands, so that doesn't help. Like, <laughs> There we go. Don't the pun. Your whole body has to work. Who needs the gym when you can make carpets? This is definitely hard work, and after just a few minutes, I'm already feeling the effects of that full body workout. Just the thought of this woman going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for eight hours a day makes my head spin a little bit. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's a long procedure, she said. Ah. So this is the pattern that they have, the drawing, so they know how to get the design. You'll often hear people say that Albanians are lazy, preferring to sit in coffee shops complaining about not being able to find work than actually going out and looking for it. Whether or not you share this opinion, and I dare say in some cases it can be accurate, clearly it's not always true, as these masters of their craft can attest. These people are super dedicated to producing high quality products and work very, very hard to achieve the desired outcomes. Okay, so not being able to tell the difference between an eagle and a crab aside, I think I did all right for my first ever carpet weaving effort. The reason there are so many long-standing traditions in Kruja comes down to the fact that it has been such an important city for the region for such a long time. And it was home to arguably the most important figure in Albanian history, the national hero, Gjerg Kasriotr Skanderberg. Having heard much about Skanderboj from the many, many people I have met over the years, I was keen to learn more and to hear it from a truly knowledgeable source, as there are many, many rumours which surround his existence and reputation. So, I asked on Instagram today what people could tell me about Skanderboj. And the first thing I got was that he never lost a war, despite always having less soldiers than the Turks. He was only 163 centimeters. Yeah, it's the last idea of uh, this uh, study about his figure. But... That's five centimeters taller than me. He was in the Order of the Dragon, like Vlad Dracula. Yes, this is true. He's not from Kruja. He's not from Kruja? No? Okay. The castle of Kruja is known as the center of the rebellion led by Skanderberg against the Ottoman Empire back in the 15th century. As the story goes, he derived from nobility and was kidnapped by the leaders of the Ottoman regime. He was educated by the Ottomans, trained to fight by the Ottomans, and pretended to be completely immersed as a newly inducted Ottoman. But all the while, he was truly planning his revenge. During the Battle of Nice in 1443, he abandoned the Ottoman army and fled back to Kruja, from where he continued to rule before commanding the League of Leisure. But more about that in the next episode. 
Now, the castle of Korea has been restored and is home to the National Museum Jeoj Katsuyoti Skandebo, dedicated to its namesake. So thank you, first of all, so much for inviting us into the castle of Skandebo. Uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit about him. Okay, so this is a historical museum and this, uh, the main part of the museum is about the life of Skanderbeg. But here we are in the first part of the museum that uh, is about the Illyrians. Uh -huh. you know, the Albanians are the descendants of the Illyrians. Here we can see a lot of archaeological objects like Illyrian weapons of 4th, 3rd and 2nd century BC. Then we have some coins and then in this picture here is uh, presented an ancient city, Albanopolis. You know, the name Albania okay. comes from this ancient city, an Illyrian tribe, the Albans. They lived four, five kilometers from here. This is the first I had ever heard of Albanopolis. It almost sounds made up to me. Here we have some of the most important oh, Teuta. Teuta, Queen Teuta. <laughs> ah, I've heard about Queen Teuta before. She was an Illyrian queen who inherited reign of her kingdom upon her husband's death. She was one fierce woman, supporting her people in their piracy of Roman ships that entered her domain's waters, telling the ambassadors sent from Rome that it was never the custom of royalty to prevent the advantage of its subjects. During a trip to Kosovo in 2015, I met some locals in prison. After a few hours together, they nicknamed me Teuta because they said I both looked and acted in a similar way to her. To me, that was one hell of a compliment. Illyria is conquered by the Romans and then Illyricum became a Roman province. But here, your right hand side the Romans, left hand side the Illyrium. Although it's important to also mention that she did lead the Illyrians to a war that they did not win. We have uh, these objects of our Middle Ages history. For example, these objects are founded not far from here are objects of 7th, 8th century AD. Then Kruja, because now we are in Kruja, and Kruja, yes. this name comes from water springs, Krua, Kroe, ah, in Albania, Kruj. spring, yes, Kruja, uh, became a very important city in 12th century. Became the capital of the first feudal state in Albania, so Arborea. To have an idea how was this place, Kruja, during the Middle Ages, we have this, this mural here, the houses inside the castle. Uh, some of the most important cities are the cities on the coast, like mm -hmm. Turus, Drishti, Ulchen. I was in Ulchen just last weekend. And so there are actually houses inside the castle as well. Typically it's Berat, uh -huh, for example. Uh -huh. We have in Berat, big Bang. water inside the castle. Uh -huh. But even in Kruja. Even here now? Yes. Today. In Kruja, we have a quarter inside the castle wow, even today. Okay. There's not many places in the world where people still live inside castles. About the religions, mm -hmm. of course the Albanian population was a Christian population. The right. icons there, we have three original icons. And the icons are used in the Orthodox churches. Here we have some of the most important families in 13, 1400s here in Albania. With red color, you can see the territories. Above the emblems, these are three symbolic thrones. Oh, okay. So, for example, one of the, the main families is Bal Balshait, in north. So when he was the king, this was the kingdom? Yes, the kingdom of Okay. Yes. And then when it changed, this then is how the territories This is, this is in Turus, Principalis. So we right. have, in different regions in Albania, we have different families. Uh -huh. eh? For example, is Balshais family in north, Topia is family in central Albania, and we have then in south two or three important families. <laughs> it's interesting to hear him talk about the different family names from different regions. I was always so surprised when I first moved here and I would tell my friend about a new person I had met and the first question she would ask me is, what's their last name? When I would tell her, she'd respond by saying, oh, he's from Škodra, or oh, she must be from Permet. I was bewildered by the fact that one could obtain so much information about someone just from their last name. And this mosaic is done by hand? This is done by two Albanian artists. Wow. Nicolette Vasia Gabriel Priftuli is illustrated Albanian High Highlander, Mansora. 
This is the the moment when he is uh, giving uh, the order. The, yes, the order. Oh. So. I like to. <laughs> then we have these uh, archaeological objects. This is very interesting. It's a lion, the lion of Venice, Venezia. Venice has this symbol, mm -hmm. but here it's very interesting. So here you can see the date, 1500. But it's interesting, the book. The book is closed. Oh, yeah. Usually the book is open, but this closed book means war. Oh, okay, it means war, okay. And the book is open, And please. this is why the lion is so sad. Yes. Oh. They are fighting against the Ottomans right, in this moment, yeah. the Venetians. Here we have this interesting map. Is the map of the Ottoman invasion in Balkan. They came from Bursa, Bulgaria. They controlled Balkan. Kruja, 1415. Uh -huh. Here starts the history of Skanderbeg, who is taken as a hostage. Uh, because the Ottomans, they took many soldiers here in Balkan. Uh, one of them was our hero, George or George Castriotti. Iskanderbeg is a Turkish name or Turkish title. Iskander means Alexander, Beg means Lord. Uh, so Iskanderbeg means the Lord Alexander. So he is grown up in West Turkey. Right, right, right. But then, 38 years old, he left the Ottoman armies. He came back here and then he defeated the Ottomans for around 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. But in this map, we can understand better how important became Skanderbeg for West Europe. Yeah. He stopped the Ottomans eh, for a long time here in Balkan. And Tirana is not on this map because it yeah. didn't exist in this time. Tirana is founded in 1614. Yeah. And Tirana, of course, became our capital in 1920. Eh? But in this moment, we have not... We have so this moment it was insignificant. We have Petrela, oh, yeah. Preza, small castles near Tirana. Mm -hmm. As mentioned, Tirana wasn't made the capital of Albania until 1920, and back in the time of Skanderberg, it didn't even exist. Hard to believe, considering that now there is very little industry outside of the city. Birthplace of Skanderberg. Skanderberg was born not here in Kruja, in Dibra. Ah, someone said this to me on Instagram. He was not born in Kruja. <laughs> he, he lived here. So he's he, from Dibra. Dibra. In Dibra is a village, today it's called Castriotti. Aha! Uh -huh. After he Like this. Yes. So, Castriotti, he was born in Dibra, he died in Leja. Yeah, I know he died Leja. in Leja. So what is the significance of, the, of Kruja to Skanderbeg? Because this uh, Kruja I mentioned was like uh, the center, but even here he lived and he, he organized the war against the Ottomans. So, right. so the, here we have the sieges of Kruja. The Ottomans, they came many times. They failed three times here. They conquered this castle only oh. after he died. This is an original bell. It's very interesting uh, because this bell sounds, yes. <laughs> it's gold and bronze. This bell announced the population of Kruja when he died. Huh? A little too excited by the opportunity to ring the bell, I totally missed the importance of what this guide was telling me. This is actually the original bell that rang to signify to all the citizens that Skanderberg had passed away. That's a pretty significant artefact. Oh, it hurts my hand. In this fresco, this is the biggest mural in Albania. And Skanderborg is here, I've seen him. He is... Where? No, he's not here. He's? Yeah, there, <laughs> with the goat head. <laughs> you can always see him because of his helmet. Yes. The his helmet is with the, the goat. goat. The goat is used by Alexander the Great. The Great, yeah. And Piro, King of Epirus. The Ottoman Empire, of course, was the strongest empire in that Bonk. time. And uh, this is the reason why Skanderbeg became very popular. Huh? Yeah. Because we have a lot I don't know in Australia, but uh, we have in Paris a square, in London, monument of Skanderbeg. We have in Brussels, in Michigan, in US, a lot of books. Vivaldi wrote an opera, paintings about yeah. Skanderbeg. So Skanderbeg became very popular in Europe because he resisted against the strongest empire in the time. The last moment of his life, he died in Leysa. That is his grave. His wife, his son, they moved in Italy after he died, uh, in Italy. Why did they move to Italy? Because uh, Skanderbeg signed an agreement with King of Naples, Napoli, 
and they protected right. the family so of Skullbeck. They feared staying here. Yes, his son was very, very young, and they moved. The first there. Albanian asylum seekers. We have everywhere, even in Australia, we have descendants of Skullbeck. Now we have the second floor of the museum that is about. Uh, so we have different books about him. He was a really impressive character. He's uh, one of the the best Ooh. statues of old Skullbeck. Everywhere you can find this. In nearly all statues of Skanderberg, he's wearing his famous helmet, which was made of metal, flaked in gold, and topped with the head of a goat, horns and all. The Iberesh are a community of Albanians who first began to emigrate to Italy in small numbers between the 11th and 14th centuries. However, in the 15th century, following the Ottomans' invasion of the Balkans, there were several large waves of mass migration. These communities kept their Arboresh language, which, if you imagine the comparison between Old English and modern-day English, Arboresh is like Shakespearean speak and ship is like the English we use on the internet today. We have a massive immigration of the Albanians. Like Skanderbeg's family, many Albanians, they moved in Italy. Eh? Oh, OK. Arboresh. Even then? Arboresh. After Skanderbeg uh -huh. uh, died, eh? many Albanians, they went in Sicily, right, in right. Calabria, in Puglia, Molise, Basilicata, but especially here in Calabria, right. our many villages, they still speak Old Albanian. Yes. Arborish. Of course, I understand. And this is why when in 1991 everyone was going to Italy, this is where they went, because they had old family and... A tradition is this uh, connections with uh -huh. uh, Italy. During the early 1900s, the Arborish population of Italy dropped significantly as a result of migration to the Americas and many feared that there was a risk of cultural disappearance. However, following the end of communism in Albania in the 1990s, many Albanians moved to Italy and into Arboresh villages, thus reviving what could have otherwise been lost. I imagine him sitting here thinking about his plan, how will I defeat the Turkish? Like, it's such a a chair for a king, you know? <laughs> a throne! A throne. It's a throne. The real image of Skanderbeg is not exactly this portrait, but this is something, something, something like this is the real image of Skanderbeg. Yeah? So it's in profile and this... So like can Italian. you tell me? I am told he was just 163 centimeters tall. No, is he, it true? Many documents testify that he was... was very tall. He was very tall? Yes. Ah. Italian tailors, in a document, they wrote that, uh, because if you see his garments, yeah. like an Italian prince in that time, and they said that we have not enough uh, material stuff to, to prepare his clothes. Right. I got a bit of a sense of frustration from the guide about mentioning Skanderberg's height. He says that he was actually very tall, but I'm not convinced. I'm only 158 centimetres and the idea of him being short is really appealing to me. What do you think about this rumour? Could he have wielded his sword, being only five centimetres taller than tiny little me? You know, in many countries, this sport... Arm, Fencing. Arm wrestling. Oh, yes, of course. Arm wrestling is called the Skander, Skander Beg. Oh, no way! In Romania, in Hungary. Because it came from him? He chose his fighters with arm wrestling. So it's not important how tall are you, but it's important how okay. strong. We need to arm wrestle later. <laughs> how interesting. What's a good way to select out the best soldiers? Why, arm wrestle them, of course. Many books about him. The first book about him, Rome, 1508. Marin Barletti, he wrote this book. As I walk through the museum, I'm trying to figure out why all these names sound familiar when I don't know anything about these people. And I realise, street names in Tirana. All the roads around the city are named after important prominent figures that you would quite rightly find in museums. It's so cool to now be able to put a story to the names I've come to know so well. Showing you even the image of the wife of Skanderbeg. Oh, this is the wife of Skanderbeg? Yes, Donika. So he married? How old was he when he married? He was 46. She was 23. He was an old bloke. But she was uh, the daughter of Ger Jarianiti, 
one of the greatest commanders in south of Albania because in this moment we have political emergency. So he decided, so even his uh, sisters, for example, are married with different families, mm -hmm. so important family. He tried to unify these families with this political marriages. Eh? Oh, and what are these? These are the, the statues that I told you everywhere oh, in Europe. So. All over Europe, okay. Rome, Brussels, London. Piazza Albania. Piazza Albania in, in Rome. Of course. This is in Michigan, in Geneva, in Gdansk. And when I go back to Australia, I'm going to build and a statue of Skanderbur there. Your mission is to have a new statue in Yes, I will do it, Australia. I will do it. I'm still working on the erection of a Skanderberg statue in Melbourne, but I'll manage it one day. Is there a statue of the Albanian national hero where you live? The altitude here is 600 meters or okay. around 2,000 feet above sea level. Kru has a very good position because here we have the mount only mountains mm. and usually the, the Ottomans, they came from this direction. Oh, from here? Southeast. This is this where today is Macedonia, so uh -huh. northern Macedonia, Greece, Bulgaria, this is Elbasana, so this direction. There is Tirana. This way? Yeah, Tirana is there, the building. That way? Yes. I thought it was here. No, Tirana is here. In front of us is Duras. Oh, this is Duras. Duras, you can see the sea. Eh? There is the Rodoni, very important, Bob, because Bob. In, in this moment we have different castles who, communicate, who are communicating with smoke signals. Eh? Uh -huh. Petrela. Bo is near Tirana, so in the way Tirana Elbasa. Yeah. Is Preza, near the airport. Near the airport, Paul. And uh, Rodonis. Don't worry, we'll be sure to show you all these beautiful places as we progress through the series. The Ottomans were interested to, to conquer this castle because their target was Italy, but even right. the Italians, they supported Skanderbeg because they knew that from here he, he can manage or he control right. the movement of their armies. Yeah, he can see everything. Everything, yes. This has been a really nice uh, and very interesting excursion for me. Uh, like I said, I've been here many times, but never with a guide who can explain. It's better because it's a history museum mm -hmm. and of course with an explanation it's much more better. Absolutely. And, and I would recommend for all foreigners to come here and take a, a guided tour, not go by yourself because it's a very intricate history and to learn exactly what it's about, you really need someone who knows what they're talking about, like him. <laughs> this is important. Thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you, thank you for the visit. Thank you for explaining yes. everything. Thank nice you. to meet you. My head was now exploding with all the knowledge I'd obtained throughout my visit to Kruja. As I stood out on the balcony watching the view, I contemplated just how different Albania was to my home, Australia where our history is not something to be quite so proud of. As I watch the tour groups passing by below me, I decide to find out what other foreigners think of their time in Korea and Albania as a whole. Many visitors come to Albania for the first time as part of a longer tour of Europe, with usually just one or two days in the land of the eagle. Whilst this can be a good way to get a taste of the country, a few days just simply isn't long enough to get any sort of experience of the spirit of the nation. So I am here with my friends from Hong Kong, friends that I just met. Uh, how long have you been in Albania? Uh, I guess um, this is the second day. The second day, and how do you find it? Uh, for the tour. Okay, so you're here on a group tour with some other people. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And is it your first time in Albania? Yeah. Yes. And why you come to Korea? <laughs> Just for fun. Just for fun, <laughs> yeah. Have you learned much about the hero Skanderbay? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> Who? Uh, no. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Have you at least tried some raki or, or Skanderbay cognac? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. It's only your second day. What has been your favorite thing about Albania? Food. Food! Yes! I like these people. <laughs> How long will you stay in Albania? Uh, we are leaving. <laughs> oh, the last day! Oh. 
That's really sad. I hope you've enjoyed your time and that your, the rest of your day is fantastic. And thank you so much for talking to me. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. It's our pressure. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, in Albanian, uh, we say goodbye as Miru Pashim. Miru Pashim. Bravo! These two groups are popular, and there is certainly an appeal to gaining some brief insight into a place, but it's those of us who come here with a little more time that tend to get entranced. It's the interactions with the locals, the freedom to be taken on adventures with them, and personal accounts of history that really make a trip to Albania so special. Yeah, we're neighbours. Where, yeah. where are you from in New Zealand? Um, we're in a little place called Waihi Beach down in Tauranga. No, down I don't the know east it. coast. Um, you're down the east coast. Yeah. Okay. And and what brings you to Albania? Because we can and we are tired and elderly. So yeah, why not? Feeling huh? the inheritance. <laughs> Before your kids get to it. <laughs> That's the one. And and so how long are you in Tirana or Sakuria? Um, Tirana we're here for two days uh -huh. and then we're going Are we going up or down? We're going to Montenegro. Oh, we're going to, to Montenegro. Montenegro, so you're going north. So where have you been before now? Um, well, we just here. This is our first two days here. Really? And what do you think? Yeah, lovely. It's nice, it's huh? Yeah, there and find out, you know, good how view. people live. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate. So now I'm going to interview you. Okay. So you're doing this for why? Um, so I am an Australian. I moved here for fun and five years ago. And now I'm just making a TV show promoting why I'm here and why awesome. this country is so beautiful. So what part of Aussie were you in? I'm from Melbourne. I love Melbourne. Yeah, it's great, right? So, thank you. We Melbourne is we're great. We're see? <laughs> in New Zealand, we're covering. We really are. Yeah, <laughs> Probably. Yeah, like. In Albania, everybody is cousins, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Huya is a town that is definitely worth a visit, no matter where you live or where you come from. What strikes me is the long-standing history of this place, the home to a hero who lived 300 years before the Europeans even knew Australia existed. Walking on the cobblestones that are probably older than the British colonisation of my country, I am reminded once again that, in Albania, I am simply just an alien.